Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Shamjit Jaman, Professor of Pathology. I welcome all in today's lecture on pathology. This is the 16th lecture on pathology. In the last lecture, I have told you uh, about the changes in vascular flow and caliber in acute inflammation and it was my day one lecture on inflammation. Today, day two lecture on inflammation. Day two, to lecture on inflammation continued. Today's topic is Changes in vascular permeability. So, changes in vascular permeability in acute inflammation. Dear audience, we know this is blood vessel in the tissue this is the endothelial lining this is endothelial lining you know through the inter endothelial junction certain amount of fluid comes out in the tissue in normal physiological condition again we can repeat in normal physical condition, certain amount of fluid comes out of blood vessel through the inter-endothelial junction in the tissue. But in case of acute inflammation, this at the site of acute inflammation, this uh, fluid that comes out of blood vessel in the tissue is increased. That is, in physical condition, each and every capillary is a bit permeable. But in acute inflammation, this permeability is changed. What is the change? Change is increased vascular permeability. So, in normal physical condition, there was normal permeability of blood vessels. This normal permeability is changed to increase, that is, increased vascular permeability in acute inflammation at the site of inflammation. Now come to what is the what are the causes of increased vascular permeability at the site of acute inflammation? Causes of increased vascular permeability. The number one cause is endothelial contraction. Endothelial contraction. There are days, suppose this is capillary. This is the endothelial lining, endothelial lining like this. If there is contraction of endothelium, there will be increased gap in between two endothelium and there will be increased vascular permeability, increased vascular permeability. The second cause is endothelial retraction, endothelial retraction. There are ends. If there is endothelial retraction, there is increased gap in between the endothelium and there will be increased vascular permeability. Then direct endothelial injury, direct endothelial injury, how directly endothelium may be injured? What are the causes of direct endothelial injury? Causes of direct endothelial injury, it may be due to back trauma. Trauma may cause direct endothelial injury, bacterial toxin, bacterial toxin, like the example of bacterial toxin, like as in septicemia as in septicemia 
another cause immunological reactions immunological reactions the audience you know reaction between antigen and antibody is called immunological reactions and this reaction may lead to direct endothelial injury another cause leukocyte dependent endothelial injury so these are the causes of direct endothelial injury that would ends if this is the blood vessel again this is the endothelial lining if there is endothelial injury what am i with the cause if the endothelial become injured here there is increased gap and through the increased gap more and more fluid comes out of the blood vessel along with the plasma protein direct endothelial injury another cause of the increased vascular permeability is increased transcytosis increased transcytosis there are you know this is the capillary blood vessel lined by endothelium you know through the endothelium there is formation of channel and through this channel through this channel fluid may come out of blood vessel this is called transcytosis if transcytosis is increased there is nothing but this is nothing but increased vascular permeability so these are the different causes of increased vascular permeability now come to nature of increased vascular permeability now come to nature of increased vascular permeability there are three natures of increased vascular permeability number 1 immediate immediate transient type of increased vascular permeability what it means it means at the site of acute inflammation increased there is beginning of increased vascular permeability just at onset of acute inflammation it means beginning beginning of increased vascular permeability beginning of increased vascular permeability just at just at onset of acute inflammation as it begins just at onset of acute inflammation it is called immediate so it is called immediate type why called transient and this increased vascular permeability persist for a few hours only so immediately there is increased vascular permeability but this permeability persists for a few hours so it is called transient so it is called transient so this is immediate transient type of increased vascular permeability we can cite an example acute allergic rhinitis the audience you know if anybody is exposed to allergen or dust on the nasal mucosa there is sneezing and there is running nose the running nose is due to increased vascular permeability it begins just at onset of acute inflammation caused by the dust and it persists for few hours so this is an example of immediate transient type of increased vascular permeability number 2 immediate 
sustained immediate sustained type of increased vascular permeability what it means it means beginning beginning of increased vascular permeability just at onset of acute inflammation so it is called immediate why called sustained the permeability persist permeability persist for long time even a few days even a few days so it is called sustained time so it is called sustained time now come to example of immediate sustained type of increased vascular permeability we can example certain example burn dear audience you know if anybody suffers from burn there is formation of blister and blister within the blister there is fluid what is the source of fluid this fluid of the blister is nothing but due to increased vascular permeability suppose this is a blister on the skin surface and it contains fluid this fluid is due to increased vascular permeability if it ruptures it ruptures there is oozing there is oozing and this oozing or watering persists for long time for a few days so this is called this is an example of immediate sustained type of increased vascular permeability number 3 delayed prolonged type delayed prolonged type of increased vascular permeability what it means it means beginning of beginning of beginning of increased vascular permeability beginning of increased vascular permeability after a long time after a long time of onset of acute inflammation of acute inflammation beginning of increased vascular permeability after a long time of onset of acute inflammation so it is called delayed type it is called delayed type why called prolonged although it begins after a long time of onset of acute inflammation it persist for long time persist for long time so it is called prolonged it is delayed and prolonged type of immediate increased vascular permeability now come to example of delayed prolonged type of increased vascular permeability <clears throat> we know if cancer of cancer bearing patient is treated by radiotherapy you know the radiation causes acute inflammation in the skin after a uh, long time of acute inflammation in skin there is oozing or watering from the inflamed skin so increased vascular permeability begins after long time of exposure or long time of onset of acute inflammation in the skin so this is an example of delayed and prolonged type of increased vascular permeability it is found in skin following radiation following radiation 
of cancer bearing patient of cancer bearing patient so this is changes in vascular permeability that is increased vascular permeability in acute inflammation dear audience again we can show the blood vessel like this endothelial lining if increased vascular permeability is here what will happen in the tissue in the tissue what will happen there will be fluid and the fluid contains plasma protein plasma protein because normally plasma protein cannot come out of the blood vessel through the normal interendothelial junction as the interendothelial junction is increased gap is increased due to any sorts of causes any causes there is increased vascular permeability and through the increased gap plasma protein comes out this is nothing but it is called exudate it is called exudate it is called exudate and this exudate in the tissue makes tissue swelling in acute inflammation dear audience now come to exudates now come to exudates what is exudate we can define exudate what is exudate extravascular protein rich fluid it is extravascular protein rich fluid results from results from increased vascular permeability extravascular protein rich fluid results from increased vascular permeability is called exudate is called exudates so this is exudates this is exudates it it is rich with plasma protein this with protein so extravascular protein rich fluid results from increased vascular permeability is called exudates another term transudate now come to transudate what is transudates it is also extravascular fluid but it is not rich with protein so extra vascular fluid results from results from increased hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure in blood is called transudates extravascular fluid results from increased hydrostatic pressure in blood is called transudates dear audience you know you know this is blood vessel endothelial lining you know within the blood vessel there are two types of pressure one is hydrostatic pressure another is colloidal osmotic pressure you know colloidal osmotic pressure more than 80% is maintained by albumin and this colloidal osmotic pressure draws water from outside to inside and hydrostatic pressure opposite action it it throws water from the inside to outside if increased hydrostatic pressure within the blood what will happen more and more fluid come out through the normal endothelial junction if increased hydrostatic pressure in blood more and more fluid come out of the blood vessel through the normal interendothelial junction and this is called transudates so it contains no protein almost or almost it contains it, uh, content of protein is nil 
Now come to differences between exudates and transudates. Now come to differences between exudates and transudates. Exudates and transudates. What are the differences? Number one, protein content. Protein content in exudates and in transudates. High content of protein like plasma. Low content of protein. Clot formation. If we take transudate into this tube and exudate into this tube, suppose this is exudates into this tube and this is transudate into this tube, we will see clot formation in the exudates not in the transudate. So clot is formed, clot is formed. Why clot is formed in exudate? Because exudates contains plasma protein. Among the plasma protein, there is presence of fibrinogen. Due to presence of fibrinogen, exudates clot. Clot is not formed. Clot is not formed. And the difference? Inflammatory cells. The other days, I have told you, exudates is formed due to increased vascular permeability and this is increased vascularity is due to endothelial injury or increased gap between two endothelium. As the gap between endothelium is increased, so along with plasma protein, formed elements like leukocytes, WC, come out of blood vessel in the tissue and these are called inflammatory cells. So inflammatory cells is found in exudate like in found, like neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil but inflammatory cell is absent but in case of exudate present another difference a specific gravity a specific gravity of exudates is high it is more than 1020 why specific gravity is high? Big, the specific gravity of exudate high is due to presence of plasma protein and cells within the exudates. But in case of transudates, low specific gravity. So these are the differences between exudates and transudates. Now come to their audience. We know at the site of equine inflammation, there is formation of exudates. There is formation of exudates at the site of acute inflammation. What are the merits and demerits of exudates? Now come to merits of exudates. Merits of exudates. Merits of exudates. Number one merit is it dilutes the irritant that is the injurious agent that is associated with acute inflammation this injurious agent is nothing but the irritant the irritant is diluted by exudate if the irritant is diluted by exudate what will happen there the irritation at the site of acute inflammation will be diminished so it diminishes It diminishes irritation, irritation at the site of acute inflammation. Dear audience, we can give an example. If anybody is exposed to foreign particles or dust on the eye, there will be irritation, there will be irritation. And when there is watering from the eye, this watering is nothing but exudate, there will be diminishing of the irritation. 
so it dilutes irritants in the eyeball and diminishes the irritation another role on merit it destroys the cogitative agent cogitative agent of infection it destroys the cogitative agent of infection the audience have told you infection is nothing but inflammation there is inflammation when caused by microorganism then it is called infection another merit it wallops the cogitative agent wallops the cogitative agent another merit exudate carries antibodies at the site of acute inflammation it carries antibodies antibiotics it carries antibiotics at the site of acute inflammation the audience we can give an example of this if anybody suffers from acute appendicitis if anybody suffers from acute appendicitis we give him or her antibiotic injectable form if we give him or her injectable form intramuscular deltoid muscle antibiotic there is appendicitis this antibiotic from the deltoid muscle how it enters at the site of acute inflammation appendix this antibiotic is absorbed by blood and the blood carries it at the site of acute inflammation that is in the appendix in case of appendicitis so it carries antibiotics at the site of acute inflammation another merit it carries antibodies at the site of acute inflammation mechanism like before another merit it prevents a spread of infection the audience again i told you inflammation caused by microorganism is called infection if anybody is infected suppose my finger is infected by bacteria this inflammation and it will spread up as there is formation of exudate and exudate contains fibrinogen fibrinogen is clot here and due to clot formed by the fibrinogen this clot will prevent spread of infection off so these are the merits now come to demerits of exudates demerits of exudates what are the demerits one demerit is exudate or it carries nutrients nutrients at the site of acute inflammation it carries nutrients at the site of acute inflammation as it carries nutrients at the site of acute inflammation if there is infection the causative agent will get nutrients from the exudates and there will be enhancement of infection enhancement of inflammation as it carries nutrients the causative agent gets nutrition from the exudates and there is enhancement of inflammation or enhancement of infection so this is a merit the demerit now come to another demerit adhesion of vital structures adhesion of vital structures as we know exudate can clot if exudate is formed in between two vital structures due to clotting of exudate with the help of fibrinogen the two vital structures may be adhering example of this example of 
addition between vital structures acute pericarditis acute pericarditis that means you know if this is heart you know this if this is heart you know heart has two layers of pericardium visceral and parietal visceral and parietal if there is acute pericarditis there will be a formation of there will be a formation of exudates in between the two pericardium if the two pericardium is formation of exudates in between two pericardium two critical layers if the exudates clots there will be addition between parietal and visceral pericardium and will lead to constrictive pericarditis so addition will lead to addition leads to constrictive pericarditis so this is demerits of exudates there are you know if this is the visceral pericardium and if this is the parietal pericardium in between two there is exudates if we can make a slice like this this slice contains like this like this there is exudates it is it looks like two bread slides within the two bread slides there is butter so it is called bread and butter type of pericarditis another example of addition between two vital structures acute meningitis pyogenic meningitis or simply pyogenic meningitis acute pyogenic meningitis or simply pyogenic meningitis you know if there is meningitis there is formation of exudates if the exudates clots there will be disturbance of flow of csf pathway flow will be occluded pathway of flow of csf will be obstructed so in pyogenic meningitis what will happen as addition addition of meninges due to exudates in csf as the addition of meninges due to exudates in csf what will happen there will be accumulation of csf and it will lead to hydrocephalus and this is known as non communicating the non communicating hydrocephalus non communicating hydrocephalus dear audience as this hydrocephalus is due to non communication due to addition of meninges it is called non communicating hydrocephalus another type of hydrocephalus it is communicating hydrocephalus there is no obstruction of the pathway but excess synthesis and secretion of or formation of csf if increased formation of csf leads to hydrocephalus it is called communicating hydrocephalus and here there is normal formation of his csf but there is addition between of meninges due to exudates and it will leads to hydrocephalus it is called non communicating hydrocephalus so these are the demerits of exudates dear audience today up to this thanks all